In Android Dev Summit 2019, Google announced a new toolkit for UI creation that presents a new approach in application UI creation. It is called Jetpack Compose and allows Android developers to add UI components to their apps directly from code and see a live preview without touching a single XML file. This technology is based on declarative programming model and is built on Kotlin, so it is fully interoperable with Java language. In this course, I will teach you how to use Jetpack Compose to create your application UI with simple, fun, and easy to follow lessons. You will learn about project setup for creating Compose apps, composable functions, adding text and image components to your app, applying material theme with Compose, various styling techniques, and more. So, if you are curious about this awesome Android technology and are excited to add it to your skill set, come and join me and have fun learning this course as I had fun creating it. Hello and welcome to the course. In this course, we will create a simple note application using Jetpack Compose. But first, we need to set up Android Studio and know which version of Android Studio we need to create Jetpack Compose applications. Since Jetpack Compose is still in alpha and not ready for production use, you will need to use the latest canary build of Android Studio, which is available on developer.android.com slash studio slash preview. So go ahead and download it and install it on your system and you will be good to go and create Jetpack Compose applications. As you can see, I have currently Android Studio 4.2 Canary 10, and that's what I will use to create the project in this course. And maybe along the way, I will update it to newer revisions of Android Studio like Canary 11 and Canary 12, if any. All right, let's get our hands dirty creating Jetpack Compose projects. As you can see, we have created a project that is previewed on the right. So the first thing we need to know about Jetpack Compose is that the UI in this toolkit is creating using functions that are called composables. And these special functions are written with an annotation of composable before them. So as you can see, we have a composable called greeting in this file in this main activity.kt file and we also have another composable default preview that allows us to preview it to preview the ui that is defined inside it so what allows it to preview the ui is a special annotation called preview that comes just before it so as you can see first we have preview at sign preview and then at sign composable that makes this special function a composable and a preview function at the same time. So uh, if you are familiar with some other uh, declarative UIs like Flutter, they have a concept of widget. In, uh, in Jetpack Compose, we don't have that concept. Instead, we have composables that just emit the UI whenever they are called. So we have this greeting composable that inside it, it has another composable of text that writes this text, text of hello Android. And the preview allows us to see uh, what, how it looks and how it will look on our device. So let's talk about the preview pane. We have the preview pane that is accessible by pressing the split button or the design button on the right. And once you do it, you will have a preview of the functions that are annotated with preview. And this gives you a good view of a good sense of how it feels and looks on the device. Once you make some change to the composables, you have to come here and press build and refresh to refresh the UI. 
and to, to see the latest uh, changes uh, in the preview. So that's it for composables. Now let's talk about how to create composables. As you know, composables are just Kotlin functions. So there's nothing special about them. You create Kotlin functions and then inside them, uh, you uh, create the UI that you want, but make sure a composable function has to be annotated with at sign composable before it. This is very important. And often we create our composables using built-in composables. So we have defined a greeting composable. Android Studio, in fact, has created a default composable here called greeting. And inside it, it has another composable text. This composable is built-in composable. If you press command or control uh, click on it, you will see the definition of it in the library. You will see what parameters it takes and how it works. You will see the documentation for it and you will find a lot of useful other information as well. So uh, that's it for now. Uh, in, the next, in the next video, I'm going to talk about uh, these functions more and I will create another composable function to give you a more sense of more and more understanding of how composable functions work. All right, let's create our own composable. To do that, I'm going to remove these two composables created by Android Studio. So I remove the call to greeting, which we don't have anymore. So I'm going to create a composable. Note that the composable has to be defined outside the class. As you can see, the class ends in this section, line 25. After that, I add a function, fun, I name it activity UI, or let's call it home UI. You can call it home screen or whatever you like. And inside this function, I will add my own uh, definition of the UI that I want for my composable. But I have to make sure that I'm using the composable annotation to make it a composable. It's available from the androidx.compose.runtime package. So once we do it, let's add some text, like this is a title, or let's say, note title because this is a notebook application and we add a title for it so if i want to see the preview on the right i also have to annotate it with preview and this is important in order to be able to see the preview for it as well most of the time it automatically refreshes the preview if it doesn't you simply press this button, build and refresh, and you will be okay. So we wait for the preview to refresh and show it to us. It doesn't, I manually press build and refresh, and we will be good to go. Note that composable functions are very flexible in that you can call other composables from a composable function. For example, I have a composable function here, home UI, that I just created. And inside it, I'm calling another composable that is uh, accidentally the compose a uh, built-in composable from the Jetpack Compose library. It can be any composable that I have, maybe another composable that I define just here, fun title. For example, just like that, and annotate it with composable. Why do we have no no errors? Composable, and let's say the text is written here, and you see by the way the preview just here very nice. I put the text here. And then what I do, I call text from inside home UI. 
I call title from here. Calling it is just like other compose uh, other Kotlin function calls. It's very easy. Title you call it from here, and it makes the title for you. Very nice, and it shows a preview on the right. All right. Now that we see the preview, there's something I need to mention. You cannot pass in parameters to preview functions. So if you have a preview function, you cannot pass a parameter for it. For example, uh, let's say I want to uh, I want to send a parameter to be used to create the title here. Let's say I have inside my surface composable, which is a another built-in composable from the Jetpack library, Jetpack Compose library. I want to call home UI and then title text. I want to send it something like note app, okay? Title text. Title text, its type has to be string. And then we can pass it to title in order to show it to us. But as you can see, Android Studio is already complaining about that about that because it doesn't accept preview uh, for this kind of uh, parameter accepting function. So if your composable accepts a parameter, you cannot annotate it with preview. This is one limitation of uh, composable functions. On the other hand, if you need to do if you need to do that, if you need to pass in a parameter, you can call that function that accepts a parameter from inside your preview function. For example, you can pass in the parameter to title like this. Well, title text note app and you can define that for title title text when you're calling it title text string it accepts a string and then you can use that text to display the text build and refresh it is automatically doing the refresh apparently or you can manually do it by pressing this button and it refreshes the preview and shows it to you come on if it doesn't show you do it one more time press the refresh button Sometimes this happens. Yeah, there we go. We have it. So one more thing before I wrap up this video is about uh, modifiers. A lot of the UI in Jetpack Compose can be customized. The way it looks can be customized and you ha can have a lot of effects and a lot of different behavior to uh, UI parts and UI sections in your Jetpack Compose application using uh, phenomenon or let's say a mechanism in Jetpack Compose called modifier. We add modifiers to composables to change their behavior. For example, let's imagine I want to add a padding to this to this section, to this section of UI, just to this text. I can have that padding using a modifier. For example, if I want to add a padding of 8 depth I say modifier, modifier can, modifier is one of the parameters of the text composable and almost any composable that is defined in Android's Jetpack Compose library has a modifier parameter. So you can use that, you can take advantage of that to change the behavior and pass in the modifier parameters that you want. So I say modifier dot padding. As you can see, it automatically shows me some hints of how to use it. 
I need to import it. It's available in androidx.compose.ui. I import it and then padding, the padding composable is a composable from this library from, uh, I import it. If you want to see where it is available, padding is inside, come on, padding, padding. Padding. Uh, it should be available here. If you open this library, you will probably find padding. I don't find it currently, but if I remove it, if I remove it, I will be able to get the hint again and head over to the definition of padding. So I press uh, Command Z to undo importing and then again modifier dot padding first I need to import modifier and it's available from androidx.compose.ui.modifier class I import it and then import padding padding is available from androidx compose foundation dot layout dot padding package okay I import it to and this will allow us to add a padding to this text section of the UI. And for 8-depth, I press 8.dep. The way you specify dimensions is like this. First the number and then dot and then the unit. The unit is dep here and it's available in androidx.compose.ui.unit.dep package. Okay, there we go. If you want to see more information about how this function, uh, how this unit is defined, you can open it in the source code by pressing command and click and see how it's defined, how its definition and the parameters, etc. So let's build and refresh to see the effect of the padding modifier on our text composable. It will add, add a padding from the four sides of this text section. You should be able to see that. Let's add more padding to make it more distinguishable and more sensible. There we go. We have a nice padding around our text. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll continue uh, our exciting journey with Jetpack Compose. Okay, now that we, we know how to create composables, let's add some uh, more layout and some more UI to our applications page. So as you can see, we only have a simple text here. I want to add more text here. For example, if this is the title of this page, I'm going to add a subtitle as well. So I add text and something like date. I add here the date for text, today's date, for example, uh, September. What's the date today? September 10, September 10, 2020. And after that, I'm going to add a body like text. This is an awesome, this is an awesome. Uh, UI toolkit. I love it. What is an awesome UI toolkit? Let's complete it. Jetpack Compose. Very nice. Now let's build and refresh and see how it looks. Wow, it doesn't look very nice. You, you see what? You know what? The text that we entered, the three text composables that we made call to here, all wrote the text on top of each other, and this is not fun. This is not good. How can we fix it? Uh, the thing is, in order to have UI elements 
appear one after the other on your screen, you have to put them in some other container, in some other composable. Like what? Like column. So I want to wrap a column around all these four, all these three text composables. In order to do that, I select the three of them. And then if I press Alt and Return, I get this suggestion surround with widget. So I get this Android X UI layout container. I remove it and instead I enter column. You see that it said widget. And as I said, widget is just a part of the UI. And the often used word for widget is composable in Jetpack Compose UI. But in uh, some other declarative UI toolkits like Flutter, they always call it widget. And that's one hint of what widget is. So I press Alt and Return to import column from Android Disk Compose Foundation Layout column. Okay, now build and refresh. It should bring all the three elements of text one after the other. Refreshing the preview. Much better, right? It's now better, but still we don't have padding for the uh, third, for the second and third text elements that we have. So if we add padding for them as well, using modifier, we will have a better time. Or we can add a padding to the column and like this, modifier, modifier, dot padding. I love modifiers. These add a lot of flexibility to the UI that we create using Jetpack Compose. 8.dep and 8.dep padding is added to the elements that I want. 8.dep modifier, I add modifier to the second and third widgets, text widgets, modifier, modifier, dot padding, 8.dep. I could have just copied, but I like typing the code modifier, modifier dot padding it dot dip. Okay, so I added a general padding for the whole column. And after that, I added uh, single paddings for each of the three text elements. So let's build and refresh. Come on, not yet refreshed. Maybe we have to wait a little bit. Whoa, it's working. Very nice, very nice, much better. So a title, a subtitle, and somebody for the text for the text of this screen, this text screen of our note application. All right, that's it for using layouts and using uh, as a layout tool, I introduced a column for you, which you can use to add several elements one after the other. Another interesting thing and another equivalent to column is a row. If you have elements that are uh, supposed to be arranged one after the other in a single row, you can use the row composable. But for the nature of our this, uh, for the nature of our application, which is a note application, we needed to order them one after the other in a vertical manner. So we used column here. I mean, you could use row here. If your application is in such a way that you want to show your elements and your widgets one after the other in a single row, you can replace column with row and you'll be good to go. But we will stick to column because it's better for our UI here. So, uh, that's it for column and creating layout with column. In the next video, I will talk about adding an image, a nice image to our UI. So stay tuned. All right. Now let's talk about adding an image. 
image is very important. Everybody loves images in applications and nice high quality images. And they add to a, they contribute to a good UI. In order to add an image, if you have some experience with Android development before, you usually put your images inside drawable directory. And that's the case with Jetpack Compose fortunately as well. So I have a note applications and a note related image already downloaded in my pictures directory. I go to my pictures directory and I copy it. Copy, 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 where's copy, copy, copy. Back to Android Studio and paste it in the drawable directory. Come on, paste it here. I select the drawable directory. I name it or rename it to just note some very simple name. And then since I want to show it in my title, no, this title actually is not very suitable. Let's move the two texts outside. Actually, I'm going to move the column definition outside this title. And let's say somewhere just inside the home UI to make everything simpler, okay? This was just show uh, in order to show you how you can pass in parameters to composables. So I put it here and for the title text, I just simply say note app. So we don't need the title composable anymore. So inside the column, I want to add a picture. How do I do that? First, we need to call, we need to create the image resource. So I define, I define a Kotlin variable. I call it, so first I define a Kotlin variable for image. I name it IMG and then image resource, call image resource. As you can see from the hints, it requires a drawable resource address, drawable note, I pass in that. Then I import it from androidx.compose UI res image resource as hinted by Android Studio. All right. Now that I created that, I need to create an uh, image, uh, make it appear on my screen using a special built-in composable for images. And where it is good to be created, I think it's good to create before the title, not too bad. So here I enter image, the image composable, very nice, imported from the foundation, androidx.compose.foundation package, all right. The first parameter, what is the first parameter? Show me the first parameter. It requires an image asset. And this is an image asset. If you press Control J on Mac, you will see that it returns an image asset type. So it's suitable. I can pass in IMG. There we go. Let's build and refresh. It will hopefully give us a very not too bad image preview. Come on, refresh. I hope that the image doesn't look very bad since we didn't use any modifiers yet for the image. I hope that Jetpack Compose is smart enough to show that in a suitable way. Come on, Mr. Compose or Mrs. Compose. Show me the preview of the image. Preview. Sometimes it doesn't work in the first uh, refresh, so you have to build and refresh again. I don't know why, maybe a bug. Very nice, I love it. I love it. We have the image. So you see that it was very simple to add an image to your application UI using an image using the built-in image composable from the Jetpack Compose library. And after that, we have our text. Not too bad. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we will add uh, more exciting features to our application. So stay tuned.
So, I already told you how excited I am about modifiers and how they allow us to change the behavior of our UI portions using Jetpack Compose. Now, uh, after we have a simple image added to our UI, I'm going to use modifiers to add a rounded corner to it. And it's very simple. After the image parameter that I pass to the image composable, I add a modifier using the modifier parameter and then call modifier dot modifier dot clip. This is a modifier that allows us to add a corner shape to it. We import it from the androidx.compose.ui.draw package. And after that, it requires a shape. You can see that from the hint by pressing command and P. So for shape, I pass in rounded corner shape, which returns a shape. Import that as well, alt and return. And inside the parentheses for rounded corner shape composable, you will, you will need to pass in the size of the corner that you want. The corner size, I choose eight depth and it's fine. So let's build and refresh and see the effect of this modifier. Refresh it. We have to see, yeah, the corner shapes are available and we can see that it's uh, adding a nice beautiful corner to our image portion of the UI. Very nice. So that's it for using modifiers to add a rounded corner to our image, to our image composable. I hope that you like this video. In the next video, I will talk more about making this app, uh, application more beautiful and talking about new features and new capabilities in Jetpack Compose. In the previous videos, we added a corner shape, a rounded corner shape to our image. Now I want to show you a more interesting thing. If you, for example, are adding an image for a profile picture or something like that, that requires a round image, you can do that simply using another modifier in fact, we are using the same modifier that we used for rounded corner shape, but this time we pass in another shape. Last time we used rounded corner shape, but now I'm using circle shape. So let's remove this rounded corner shape and I'm passing this time circle circle shape I import it and what is this circle shape if you open it by pressing command and click it's a variable it's a read-only variable that is equal to rounded corner shape with a percentage of 50 percent passed into it so it's not a very special thing it's just rounded corner shape, but with a percentage of 50 that allows us to have a round image. So if I build and refresh, I will see a round image, a round image effect applied on my image UI. Nice. You see that we easily applied a round image, a round shape to our image using the circle shape modifier, or more specifically, if you want to say it more accurately, is rounded corner shape with a percentage of 50. So I hope you liked it. In the next video, we will get output from our project. One nice thing about Jetpack Compose is its support for material design out of the box. So as you see, as you know, we didn't add any specific library for material design when we created the project, but it supports material design out of the box. If you look at 
the set content block of our application, you see that we have notebook theme. If you open it, you will see that it defines the theme of our application. And in part of it, we have material theme. In fact, in the body of that, we have material theme that is using material theme out of the box for Jetpack Compose. And it applies all the material styling to our application's different UI portions. So we don't need to go very deep into how it works for now, but know that our application supports material design out of the box. All the content that we defined is comes inside material theme here. So now I'm going to show you how material design can help us to add very nice effect to our text here. I'm using a feature of material theme that allows us to add different typography for different text sections of this screen. For example, I'm going to make this a title looking like a title. So it has to be a little bit bigger and it's uh, going to take a style of heading, a heading like style. And after that, this is a subtitle for date. So it has to be smaller. And the, and the body text has to be uh, something suitable for body has to style has to be a style some with something like of a body style. For that purpose, I'm going to use the typography feature of material theme. So let's define a variable val typo typography. And I make use of material theme dot typography for it. All right. I use material theme the typography and then from this I go to the text section and then style this is a parameter of the text composable style I set its value to typography dot h4 for this section for the title one and then for the second which is something like a caption for date, I set its style to typography dot caption. And then we go to style for the body. Its value becomes typography dot body one. We have two body styles in material theme, body one and one. We have two body styles in material theme, body one and body two. I'm using body one. Let's build and refresh. There we go. The styling that we want was applied thanks to the material themes built in capabilities for text styling. Very nice. So I hope you liked this video. In the next video, I will have more surprises for you about Jetpack Compose. Stay tuned. In the previous video, we added a circle shape clip to our image so that it uh, showed in somehow like a circle, but I didn't like it very much. So I preferred to revert back to my previous version, which was a rounded corner shape of the size 8 depth. So now we are going to build our application and actually deploy it to the device. So I'm already running the emulator. So I press run app in order to deploy the deploy this to my device. I'm going to get the output from the application and see how it looks on a real device or on an emulator. So we wait for the build to complete and install the application on the device. Launching activity is almost done. Launch succeeded. We head over to the emulator to see how it looks. There we go. Our application is running with our image with nice round corners, the title, caption, and some body text.